Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. A few weeks ago, I posted a video about my OpenRGB desk fan project, and at the time it was just kind of a proof of concept. I had made a circuit board and was experimenting with an input scheme, but now we have the finished product. And here it is. So what I have here is the OpenRGB desk fan, and it is based around a 120 millimeter ARGB PC fan, along with this control box that houses an Arduino Pro Micro uh, based control board that I made. And basically it is a desk fan that syn syncs up with OpenRGB. So I have OpenRGB running on my laptop here, and you can see that I have the effect running on my keyboard, my microphone, and the fan. It's all synced up. Uh, it actually acts as a Corsair Commander Pro, uh, thanks to the Corsair Lighting Protocol Arduino project, uh, which simulates Corsair uh, lighting node devices. And with it, it can actually run both the lighting control and the fan control. But on top of being able to control it from software, I wanted a physical control because I wanted to be able to easily turn the fan on and off and control the fan speed. So I added this uh, encoder knob. And the encoder knob works with the LED strip in the base to work as a display. So I can turn the lights down and you can see that it switches into this uh, mode where it shows the value on the LED strip. And red means fan speed. So when I turn it all the way down, it will shut off the fan completely. And then I can slowly dial it up this is the lowest speed and there's 10 different settings you go up until all the leds are lit and that's the highest speed um, so yeah you can control the fan speed and then also if you push in on the knob it starts out at the red red means fan speed push it again you get green green is led brightness so this is independent of what open rgb is doing you can just control the LED brightness uh, and turn the LEDs down if you find they're too bright. Uh, I'll just turn them back up. Uh, so that is the control with the knob. And then after five seconds of inactivity, it just goes back to whatever LED effect is running, whether that's a built-in effect uh, from the lighting node or whether that's an external effect being run from OpenRGB or technically any other software that would uh, work with a Corsair Commander Pro. Uh, I designed it for OpenRGB, of course. So the design is kind of inspired by the Noctua NVFS1 that recently came out. And it's a, a basically Noctua's kind of desk fan. It's a PC fan on a little stand with uh, some accessories that allow you to plug the fan directly into the wall and use it as like a desk fan. It has this like... Uh, they call it an air amplifier, I think. It's this, like, vent on the front. I kind of find that uh, didn't really fit the idea of the uh, open RGB fan where I was going for looks as well as uh, function. And the, the airflow from the Corsair fan feels just fine without it, so uh, I went with a design that doesn't have that. But this is kind of where I got the inspiration, but I wanted to do this with, uh, with RGB. So I actually uh, went to Thingiverse um, and found some existing designs, uh, this one in particular, which is a, a fan stand for a 120 millimeter fan. It's kind of this uh, rounded square frame and then this uh, front like hinge piece with a grill. And that was actually a remix itself of this other one, which didn't have the grill. Uh, so I've actually taken parts from both of these designs to incorporate into mine. And so what I added to the design really was this base. The base consists of the kind of control box, and it basically has uh, little standoffs and screws in it, as well as like holes in the back panel for the ports uh, so you can mount the electronics. And then a space in the front for the LED strip. And then the top piece, which has holes to mount the fan stand itself, a hole for the cables to go through from the fan, and then this hole for the knob, 
as well as uh, a lip to hold it in place and then some standoffs so that it can be screwed into the base plate where there are these matching screw holes uh, from the bottom where there are these holes where you can put the screws in. And then also the fan stand which uh, comes from that original model, the fan mount with the grill, I've provided the fan mount without the grill. Uh, I prefer this one. I've printed in both, and this one gives you a little bit more airflow. The grill does restrict the airflow just a little bit, uh, but I've provided both options. And then another thing I tested was just having a flat grill piece on the back to have the fan fully enclosed, uh, which reduced the airflow the most, and this uh, actually kind of caused a high-pitched whining sound because the fan blades were right next to this grill. So um, maybe if you want it as safe as possible, uh, this is an option, and maybe your particular fan won't have the blades so close to the mesh and won't cause that problem, but I ended up not using this because of that uh, noise. Then I also uh, have all this stuff on my GitLab page, which I'll link in the description as well. And there I have a page on building the electronics, uh, which goes through uh, the circuit board designs. They are not 100% up to date. I will be changing out these images. Uh, basically, I added the ability to turn the fan completely off, and this older design doesn't have that. Um, but I will be sure to update that page soon. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fan itself. Uh, so right now, so we can look at the different pieces. Um, and here's one that's kind of taken apart already. So this is the outer ring that mounts the fan. This is the part that the fan kind of goes into, like so, mounts in with four fan screws. That slots into here and uses two uh, M3 by 15 bolts to hold that in and that allows it to kind of swivel on that pivot there. And then this piece is held into the top with two uh, M2 by 8, I believe, screws. And then on the bottom, there are these standoffs which allow it to install into the base. So here is the base. It has holes in the bottom for the screws, and that just kind of goes together like that. So I want to take this one apart and look at the electronics next. So I've already taken two of the screws out. Actually, let's uh, go to red and turn that off so that the fan isn't spinning. I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the two screws that are still in here. I've already taken two of them out. Uh, as you can see, these are two millimeter in diameter, eight millimeter long, and they have kind of a, a point, um, like a self-tapping screw. And then there's one more in here. As we can see, it's opened up now. And move this to the side. Move that out of the way. And then I'll switch to the overhead camera. So let's pull this in a little bit. So what we have here is the inside of the box. And so I've actually designed two different versions of the electronics. Um, the one that's installed right now, this one is the USB bus powered version. Uh, so this one only powered by the five volt USB bus power, not from any external source. And then the other version is externally powered using a 12 volt uh, barrel jack connector. The difference here, they, the fan motor needs 12 volts to run and the LEDs need five volts as, long, as well as the Arduino. Um, so with the bus powered version, the Arduino is directly powered off the five volts. 
there's a few mods to bypass its current limitations uh, to basically get unlimited access to the current from the port. And then it runs all of that. It runs the five volts through a capacitor and through this uh, step up module, a boost converter, which is configured to 12 volts. Uh, so the power actually gets stepped up from five to 12. The 12 volt runs the fan and the five volts from the USB bus power run the lights and the Arduino. On this other version, 12 volts comes in externally and it directly powers the fan. And then this is a step down module, which converts the 12 volts down to five volts. Uh, it's adjustable, so it's uh, tuned to five volts. And then that five volts runs the LEDs as well as the Arduino. The Arduino can also just be five volt powered from the USB port. Um, but that allows it to be run standalone with just the 12 volts plugged in. Um, it'll just do whatever configured pattern the lighting node or the Commander Pro is configured to have uh, in hardware. And then you can still adjust the fan speed with the knob. Or you can plug in both and talk to it with OpenRGB and control it that way. Whereas this one, uh, kind of the same idea. You could power it off of just a USB power bank or power supply if you wanted to run it standalone. Uh, same thing would apply, but this one allows you to just get by with one cable. Uh, so the reason I built two of them, this is the first one I built, and it's I think it's safer to use the 5 volt or the 12 volt external supply because you're not exceeding the current limitations of USB. Um, so this is the safer design. This one, on the other hand, is more convenient. It only needs one cable, and the thing is, a lot of USB devices these days overdraw. The USB standard, uh, at least USB A ports, are really only designed for 500 milliamps in the spec, but there are a lot of devices, cell phones, Raspberry Pis, uh, other single board computers, um, power banks, all sorts of stuff these days uh, draws like up to two amps from a USB A port. Um, so I thought, you know, it can probably run just fine. Uh, so I, I built this board kind of as a test to see what happened at the highest load, which is the fan fully on and all the LEDs at full bright white. Uh, which is the most power it can possibly draw, it pulls like 1.2 amps, which is more than 500 milliamps, but it seems to be okay on every computer I've tried to run it off of, my laptop, several desktops, uh, even my PC at work. But if you want to power it, or if you want to connect it to a USB hub, uh, I would do this one, especially if you're using a non-powered hub. Uh, the hubs usually can't take that level of power draw. Um, and it does, it has a, when I've tried this one on a hub, it just resets the hub or shuts down the hub. So this one better if you're using a hub, this one convenient if you're powering it directly from your PC. Um, so the, basically other than the power circuitry that differs, um, this extra board here is just to fit this module. There's nothing else on this board. So basically if you just ignore this half. And, and this half, everything else is the same. Uh, so we can kind of move that out of the way and take a, a closer look at this. We've got an Arduino uh, Pro Micro that's running my custom Corsair lighting protocol based uh, firmware. Then that's driving two channels of ARGB. This one is a four pin Corsair fan header. This one is just a standard, it's just like a three pin uh, for this like LED strip style connector that comes on on a lot of LED strips and so um, I have the one in the the in between these two is uh, positive and the one on this end is negative uh, so if you install it in the case like this then this uh, kind of the red red green white like that and then also this one, this other four pin, that's the PWM uh, fan header. So you have ground, plus 12, um, unused, and then PWM. So it, it doesn't read back the fan RPM. And then this header here is for the encoder uh, control knob. And what I've done with that is soldered. So there's four wires. There's the ground 
the A and B of the encoder knob itself, and then the push button that's inside of there. That's four wires. I've wired them out to a connector, and that just plugs in to here. Uh, ground at the top, button, and then encoder A and B are these two. And so that reads uh, the encoder. So that can go in here, and then that plugs in. So the, the last thing to note on the PCB is the transistors. So originally I designed it without those, and I just wired the 12 volts directly to this 12-volt uh, pin on the fan header. Uh, and what happened is with the fan, with the PWM signal turned all the way to minimum, the fan would still spin. I wanted to be able to completely stop the fan. So what I did is I added this uh, transistor switch with a, this is a 2N2907 uh, PNP transistor that switches the high side. So it switches the 12 volts. But then to drive that from 5 volts, you need an NPN. So this is a 2N2222, I believe, uh, that is driven from a pin on the Arduino via a resistor. And that basically allows it to switch the 12 volts on and off to completely power off the fan. So this is what I need to update the documentation for, is this transistor circuit. Um, what I've done is I've just used these uh, commonly available proto boards. Um, they're like 50, yeah, five centimeters by seven centimeters uh, proto boards. Very common. I can get them in a pack of like 20 for not very much. Uh, and then I just soldered traces by just kind of drag soldering and making solder uh, lines between the pads. And so you can kind of see the connections there and there. I've got pictures of these as well that I'm going to put in the documentation um, so that you can see how the USB powered one looks as well. Um, but then that just fits into the box right here. If you're using this version, which has two PCBs, there are eight screws to put in. If you're using this version, there's only four screws to put in. You put in all the all the eight screws in the corners. Then you plug the LED strip in, plug the encoder in, and then I designed it for a Corsair RGB fan because Corsair's RGB connector is actually this four pin connector. The fourth pin is actually data out, so it has uh, ground, data in, data out, and plus five. We don't care about the data out because we're not passing the signal on to another fan. Um, and then on the Corsair connector, they have this little tab. And on my design, the tab faces towards the Arduino and plugs into this connector here. Uh, you can also get an adapter that converts a Corsair header or a Corsair fan, four pin Corsair fan into a standard uh, three pin ARGB header, or you can just modify the board design if you want. Uh, while you're while you're building yours, um, and then for the PWM fan, it's a standard four-pin fan. Pretty much any ARGB fan will have one of these. Uh, the little two tabs that stick up, um, those also face towards the Arduino, so upwards. So we'll plug that in like so, and now the fan is all connected and ready to go. As is the LED strip. We we'll can make sure the LED strip is stuck down. I notice this one's kind of peeling up a little bit. The tape doesn't always stick well to PLA. And so on this one, it actually runs off of a 12-volt uh, barrel jack. So I just have a power brick with a 12-volt barrel jack. These are, are pretty common with like external hard drives, routers, network switches, that sort of thing. Pretty standard size 12-volt barrel jack. So we can just plug that into this connector, which... I've actually kind of glued to the PCB on its side and then soldered wires through because it didn't exactly fit. And then that uh, powers on the fan and basically uh, this one has been having some weird input issues. I think that might be, uh, I think I might have damaged the Arduino uh, re-soldering it. I, I hit this one with pretty high heat trying to get it out of another board. Um, 
the the knob isn't reading correctly on this one i'm not sure why it's just getting kind of random inputs and uh yeah uh still issue with this particular arduino i think uh, it's working fine on that one they're running the same code but yeah that's demonstrating uh the two different board versions so yeah then basically to assemble it we can just reverse that process kind of bundle up the wires i actually put the fan and some heat shrink to hold them all the, the wires together kind of get everything aligned and inside the case and then the case has a little bit of a lip on it so it should kind of fall into place and then you can just go back and put the the screws in on the bottom and repeat that for all four of these holes. So one, two, three, and four. And well, I'll do the other ones off camera. So then you've basically assembled it. I put some stick on uh, rubber feet and then yeah, you've got your open RGB desk fan. And then you can put it next to you while you work, plug it into your laptop, enjoy the light show, and have it all synchronized with OpenRGB. So yeah, um, that's really all I wanted to show about this project. If you have any questions, if you want to build one, if you do build one, please post a make on Thingiverse or uh, let me know. I'd be happy to take a look at yours and to repost it or something. Um, yeah, I, I, it's a project that I've made a few of them for my friends already, so yeah, thanks for watching.